All right, guys, still Winston on Africa Business Radio, like I did promise you, uh, right at 10, uh, I did tell you we'd have uh, a super interesting conversation with the amazing and incredibly talented Maka, and we have Maka live with us right now. Maka, good morning. I'm fine. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Hmm, good to have you on. You, you sound like you're already um, up and about, <laughs> up to a great ginger, start. Ginger, ginger, <laughs> ginger. Fantastic, fantastic. That's the spirit. That's the way. Um, so real quick, I want to start this interview uh, on a different tip, right? Real quick. Um, so when people hear Maka, what comes to mind is that soulful calm angelic voice however a lot of people may not exactly know about the versatility uh, that Maka actually possesses so real quick let's talk about the other sides of Maka aside being the singer and the live performer okay what do you want to know? Yeah, the other sides of Maka, the versatility, all the things you can do, um, all the oh, genres of okay. music. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, I'm also... Okay, so taking it to the extreme, mm. I am a jeweler. I recently mm. became a jeweler. Mm. And that has been going really well. I realized that um, part of the music business is, is product, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> You always have to give your fans or uh, people who just love the brand. You have to give them something tangible. Mm. And music, you can't hold music. You can't see music. You can only feel it and listen to it mm. and love it. So that inspired my going into um, creating jewelry. Mm. And I realized that it had to be it had to be something that I loved as well because it had to come naturally. Right. And um, I've always loved Af- um, all things Afri- mm. African, mm. all things Afrocentric. And uh, so my jewelry, my jewelry line is called Mika. Mika. Mika by Maka. Okay. And we focus on, yeah, 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 Mika. We focus on African accessories. So beads, uh, cowrie, Whoa. Um, yeah, and accessorizing it with your urban fashion. Hmm. So that has been that's a new journey that I'm on, and I've and I've enjoyed it so far. I am enjoying it so far. Hmm. It's a lot of fun. So that's one part of me that a lot of people are just getting to know because hmm. I'm pushing the brand with the music as well. Fantastic stuff! Wow, look at that, Amanda entrepreneurial yeah. side <laughs> um, and then so yeah. so do you do you do you I mean so Africa has very rich cultures um, Nigeria in itself yeah. has very rich cultures how do you determine you know what style your your beads and your jewelry should take like where do you borrow from do you combine do you mix or do you just say you know what let's do stuff that looks like it's from this particular tribe or this region or this country oh no it's Africa in in general. Okay. But then again, I have to do what I know, mm. which is Nigeria. Okay. So most times, I would say I'm inspired by Nigeria. Mm. But in general, on the whole, it's African art. It's African culture. Fantastic. That pushes the brand. So mm. so sometimes I might research on, on, on South Africa, on other parts of Africa hmm. and see how they can inspire new designs. Hmm. Then I then I put then I put what makes it Maka hmm. because I'm one I'm known for one thing which is being different. I know how to put my spin on anything. Right. So that has to apply to my jewelry as well. Hmm. As I apply it to my music. Hmm. I'm not the only soul singer mm-hmm. in Nigeria. Or when Maka sing, it's different. Mm-hmm. It's different. So that applies to to the jewelry brand as well. When I get on stage, it's different. Mm. Right, right. Fantastic. Very well said. Now, yeah. um, I wanted to also get your thought on something, especially now we're talking, you know, um, from the African perspective. Um, a lot of people have said that, you know, young creatives 
young African creatives do not collaborate um, enough. And this this goes for a whole lot of sectors, not just even in the creative industry, uh, even with you know business and tech and agriculture, whatever it is. There's there's so much more that could be done if the African market is harnessed. Do you understand? But specifically talking about music now, yeah. I remember having this conversation with different people, and I was saying, imagine if we actually had, you know, the proper distribution network like they have in the West, and the way yeah, a Nigerian yeah. artist was doing, say, ten or five million units in Nigeria, he's also doing two million in Ghana, five in South Africa. Yeah. 10 in Tanzania like, can you imagine the astronomical numbers so um, and, and one of the major mm. things that would also facilitate this uh, is if you know young African creatives actually collaborated better what, what do, you, do you think African creatives are collaborating enough and if not why do you why do you think that's the case I feel I feel like everybody has their own click you know like everybody has their own click mm-hmm. and um, and everyone is pushing their own agenda. Mm. So it's not even coming from a place of of um it's not coming from it's not coming from a bad place. bad intention mm. not to collaborate. Yeah. Yeah. Like I don't think people are trying to be selfish. They're just trying to um do what's best for them. So mm. instead of trying to collaborate with people like them, they keep um focusing on themselves or trying to work with bigger artists mm. to push their own music so um, these are conversations I've, I've had time and time and time again mm-hmm. with with people like me and honestly there was a time I used to think like that I'm not even going to front like I think like that like oh um, I want to I want to work with um so so and so rapper, so so and so singer. When I have friends who are even more talented or mm-hmm. as talented as they are, right there, who will kill to be on a song with me. Mm. But I would overlook them and be pursuing people who wouldn't even respect me. But right. I'm not even like that anymore. Mm. Now is for me it's all about creating my community. You have to grow together because all these eighties artists, mm. they started from somewhere. They mm-hmm. created their community, they created their group. That's mm-hmm. why like back then you have all these all these names with them. Um okay, so they're way before my time, so I might forget names. Mm-hmm. But you have all these rappers that used to um hang together, them Terry the Rapman and all of them. Mm. And then you go to Trade Butter. You have all of them mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and the rest of the, the, the people, all of them that have names. I, I don't remember because they're before my time. Mm, right. But my point is, they they were all friends, but said each other's music and grew to the point where we call them OGs now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, collaboration is not being done enough. Mm. I agree with that. But I think... I just don't think it's coming with um, from a bad place. Mm. People just want to push their people. Just, they just want to push their shit and move. Yeah, people just want to focus on their career and, and focus on themselves. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, so let's talk about. <laughs> Live performances now. Um, I mean, it's <laughs> there's no, there's no, there's no better person to to talk uh, talk to about this than you. So live performances, right? Um, I mean, first, you know, a whole lot of people still don't understand it. I mean, they're even talented artists who, when they go on stage, it's different. The art of live performance is something, oh, um, yeah. yeah, it's a different ball game. So just, just for people yeah. who are listening, especially young people who may not totally understand it, you know, in your own words, can you just brush on live performances and the, the few things that make it stand out and also how you could, you know, tap into it as a young artist? Um, okay. So, performing on stage, mm. um, I guess there's two different, there's two, two different sides to it, yeah? Mm. Because now, in um, in this new context, mm. um, performing on your performance track mm-hmm. could be live performing. Yeah, true. Because, hey, you're singing live on an instrumental, so, mm-hmm. yeah. And then there's the live band. Yes. So, 
the one that I'm more into is the live, the live band, band performance. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So yeah, yeah. So performing with a live band is more my thing because it gives you the room mm-hmm. to to freestyle, to mm-hmm. play with the music, to be yourself, and you can even create new vibes right there on stage. Mm-hmm. Live performing is an art. Because it's not just about the good voice; it's mm. about everything. It's a total package. It's mm-hmm. about how you handle yourself on stage. Mm. How do you carry yourself? What's your charisma? Mm. Do you do you need people in awe? Do you have that fire? Like do you do you make people focus on you and nothing else? Mm. That's why Beyonce would still be one of the greatest performers of mm-hmm. our time. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Let me not say our. Because I mean, you're an older nigga, so I'm mm-hmm. I'm young. <laughs> so in my time, Beyonce is one of the greatest performers. Cause like, I've not seen anybody who does stage performances like she does. Like mm. even her hair, yeah. everything is just electrifying. Right. Like mm-hmm. you can't take your eyes, you can't take your eyes off Beyonce when she's on stage. Mm. Whether or not you're an OG, you're gangster, or you're, you're stage, younger, you like yeah, you true. cannot. I am telling you, like you cannot take your eyes off her when she's on stage. Even if you don't like her music, mm-hmm. you just want to watch her. You just want to see her do her thing. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's what live performances are about. Mm-hmm. It's the energy. It's not just about the voice. So like Stella, and I didn't have the greatest voice in the world. Mm-hmm. In fact, top top one million voices in the world, Stella is not even on that list. Mm. But on stage it was something else he is definitely one of the greatest performers absolutely. in the world absolutely hmm. Hmm. So that's it fantastic so that's a, that's a great reference right there what you need when you're in the studio <laughs> yeah your voice is what you need when you you're in the studio on the record yeah you're you're doing your thing in the studio hmm. but once you get on stage it's a whole different ball game hmm. and that's and that's what I find very unique about me. Mm. When I'm in the studio, it's different. When I'm on stage, I always tell my band members, um, the name of my band is one band like that. <laughs> I love that name. I always tell, mm. yeah, yeah. I always tell my guys, almost oh, see, forget what we recorded in the studio. See, forget this, my jam, mm. this MP3 you're listening to. Let us express the song in our way, in right. our own way. Right. Let's make it ours because it is live music. Mm. Let us create it. Let us get inspired. Mm. Let's eat up right. each other mm, and right. create something with this jam. Because that's what live performing is about. Fantastic, fantastic. Have I said enough? Absolutely, well said, like well <laughs> articulated. <laughs> of yeah. course, I know you love that. But so now that brings us to to the next thing, which is also like the second part of the topic. Because I just asked you the first part. Um, you and I like how you differentiated. Um, you know, you know the the two kinds of live performances, uh, which is you know performing to your track or your instrumental, um, and actual you know live band performances, which is also different. Now, the good thing is for live band performer which you are people like you people like flavor uh people like yeah. tk you can do yeah. both if you're in a situation where you have to yeah. just you know perform to your soundtrack you can also easily kill that with some extra yeah. ad lib and of stuff course. as well exactly now yeah. let's talk yeah. about let's talk well, about the time I yeah. have to extend them some of my instrumental for okay me. Okay. Just to give me room to actually express myself properly aha uh-huh. yeah. fantastic so now let's talk about um possessing this you know, live band performing skill because um, there's a there's a thing or there's a conversation where you know there's some shows that live band performers do that regular mimers cannot do, and that's some extra money. For example, if you wanted to book a flavor and his band, you know how much you will be paying. You'll probably be paying like three times mm-hmm. exactly mm-hmm. what yeah what you would pay mm-hmm. if it was just flavor coming to dance and wine is waste for you, <laughs> right? So um, let's yeah. talk about the impact yeah. of actually of live band performances on 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 artist revenue, especially in these times that we're in, you know, where there, there seems to be, you know, smaller, more intimate settings and live band performances, you know, especially with COVID and the pandemic. Yeah. So what well, yeah, let's talk about the impact of, you know, performing live of live band performances on artist revenue. Tell us about that. Does do yeah. the artist can um, is it is there a way to make a little extra? How does that happen? Oh yeah, definitely. For a long time when I started 
when I started my music, mm. yeah, um, I thought it would be about releasing records mm. and um, releasing records, shooting videos, and all. And as I be as as I began to grow, I I saw my gift as a performer, and then I met a few friends who turned out to be family, who turned out to be my band OBLT, mm. and we started my pop up show Maka After Dark, okay. um, Mad for short, mm. and people would come through. It was every. It was every other month, okay. bi monthly, and I had, and they were ticketed. So this was a way to to have my fans come through, right? And then give you a token mm. in the form of that ticket to support the hustle. Mm. That's that's the way artists can get some money back by doing their own shows. In that way, um, they can either get music promoters who you know. Who they'll pay to push the show to get more people mm. and then they get more money mm. and then I'm definitely um, okay where was I okay I am I'm actually no you're talking I'm about yeah, right the, now. you're talking okay, about so my the, point yeah, yeah so my, what I'm trying to say is mm-hmm. um, when I when I just started performing mm-hmm. I I was very dependent on my live gig because I was getting paid for all of them. Like it was amazing how much people were paying me to come and perform. Right. I was performing for for corporate corporate um corporate bodies. Mm. I was performing for for families, you know, intimate gigs, mm. um, birthday dinners. Mm. Wow. And all of that that wow. I actually got distracted and you know that <laughs> I didn't really care mm. about the digital space yeah anymore. the music yeah and, and how I, I was to, doing just, yeah exactly <laughs> I just wanted to focus on my band mm. and just be getting gigs and just be performing just be mm. doing our thing I I performed for MTN a few times mm. wow. for GTB you know like wow fantastic I've stuff. done I've done stuff like that and it was it was blowing my mind because I because <laughs> I was just this this young babe and they were treating me with so much respect and I'm like <laughs> why do I ever want to leave this industry space like mm-hmm. why do I want to fight for for space with people you know mm. with those big names I know like, yeah no more, no more people can enjoy your fame or me I would just want to make money and mm-hmm. be singing mm-hmm. you get mm. so like so yeah live performances actually bring a lot of income mm. I mean well depending on on the talent, you know, mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. if we go back to um, to how your performances are mm. fine, they'll they'll pay you to perform once, and once you once once you once you don't kill it, yeah, you might not you might not get a call back. Call you back. Mm, right? It's not might. You definitely will not get a call back. <laughs> so mm-hmm. so you have to be good as well. Mm, yeah. Okay. So you have to be good at what you do mm. as well. And it was. It was up until the pandemic that I realized, wow, that I was so dependent mm. on life performing. Right. And I learned a huge lesson. Right. Everything has to be, everything has to be balanced. Yes, there has, it has to be, to be moderation balanced. in mm. everything. I, yes, I wasn't spreading myself well mm. um, um, on the digital, on the digital space. music space. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, because if, I, if you were I like revenue about, from from that, could have maybe sustained exactly. you. Yeah, from I didn't streams. care. Mm. I didn't care about streams. I didn't care about you know, you know, great social media content. Or, yeah, actually, mm. nah. All I wanted to do was just, just perform, perform. Mm. and that's what I was doing all those years. I was so busy organizing my own shows, being mm. a freelance performer, mm. and on my Corona hit, and I was just like, wow. <laughs> Wow! What okay, is, I, I, I get was, that. Mm. I was I was low. That was a low point for me and mm. a lot of mm. life performers like myself. That was a very low point. Mm. And so, yeah, the lesson I took from that was: nah, every part of the music business is important. It's important. So mm. Whether you are, yeah. So the social media is important. Being on stage is important. Mm. Everything is important. Mm. Really. 
Mm, fantastic. Yeah. Well said. Well said. Well articulated for sure. Um, great stuff. Wow, Maka. <laughs> um, real quick, before we wrap this up, uh, tell us now. I really enjoyed the conversation. I like the way you you made it very easy to understand. But tell us about um, new music that's coming. I mean, I know a few things, but let the people know. Uh, you, we know you're always working anyway. Oh yeah. Um, plus, you also have a, <laughs> yes, a, a, a gig. You also have a gig coming up as well. You can talk about that as well, real quick. Yeah, today is World Jazz Day, mm. and I have a gig tonight. Actually, mm-hmm. yeah, it's one of the private stuff. So every jazz lover in the world mm. today is doing something. Mm. It's International Jazz Day, mm-hmm. and, and apart from that, tomorrow, first of May, I will be having my own show as well. Mm. So that's like fantastic. One of the one of the first ones since um, since the pandemic hit. Wow, <laughs> I'm now trying to get back out there because because movement is. Is better than before, yes, yes. and our clients clients are reaching out again. So Ooh. everyone <laughs> should expect seeing more of Maka mm-hmm. in their favorite spots, and they should all come out. I don't know if I'm allowed to mention name of spots. You yes, know, yes, you, you can. guys have your rules about promoting no, you can, you can, you can. locations. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, you okay, can. so tonight I'm gonna be at okay tonight I'm gonna be at the Lucky Leisure mm. um, for the World Jazz Day, and then tomorrow I'll be at the Kingford. Lounge mm. in Lake Stage One right. for Soul Night. It's a show called Soul Night, so mm. it's, it'll be Maka and one band like that. Fantastic. So they're saying mm-hmm. tomorrow, mm-hmm. later, 8 p.m. Mm. Just come with your positive energy. Nice. Because the show is free, and all I need is the positive energy. Mm-hmm. We trust yeah. you to always uh, bring that great performance as well. It's going to be great. I'm a great <laughs> ass performer. Man. I, I it's. I was born to do this shit. Crazy, <laughs> right? I was born for this. Really. Right, right. When I'm on stage, I'm a totally different person. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm a totally different person. And I know, I don't, I didn't create that phrase, queen of stage, from nothing. Like, it's not even pride. Because mm. I believe in, it ain't tripping if you got it. Like, if you mm-hmm. can back it up, then it ain't Absolutely. tripping. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, nah. So, All really, right. though, mm-hmm. but, like, everybody mm-hmm. should just come through. Yeah. As for music, I'm working on new sound mm. um, and a new an album should drop before. I mean, in a couple of months. Okay, fantastic. I'm working on stuff. Fantastic. I shot a video a few weeks ago mm. for this unreleased project. So okay. yeah, something should drop soon. Okay. All right, mm-hmm. Maka, thank you so much uh, for the great conversation. It was really smooth and really, you know, on point. Yeah. <laughs> all right, and wish you all the best and big ups with your Thank projects you as well. Yeah, yeah. Thank all right. you. All right, man. All right, Thank then. You. All right, Thank take you. care. Yeah, all right. All right, guys, we have been yeah, having bye. Uh, bye. <laughs> Uh, that was a great conversation with Maka, super talented singer, um, live performer, soul singer as well. Like she, she, I mean, we'll just play something from Maka right now. We did play it earlier, but we'll play it again now for the sake of the interview so you have a taste and feel of what Maka sounds like. And don't go anywhere.